What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katia. Today, we're going to upgrade your vocabulary by learning 10 C1 and C2 phrases. They can stand you in good stead when taking your CAE and CPE exams. Are you ready? If so, grab your notebook and let's kick off. Before we start, just to let you know that the level of these phrases is determined by the Cambridge Dictionary that tends to provide this kind of information. So, today's lesson will consist of two parts. First, we're going to learn five C1 phrases, and then in the second part of the video, we're going to look at five C2 ones. So, the first C1 phrase on my list today is in the event of something. It means in case of something or if something happens. It's more frequently used in a formal setting, but it can also be informal. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, in the event of the flight is cancelled, you can get a refund. In the event of the flight is cancelled, you can get a refund. And one more example, in the event of an earthquake, you should get under a table. In the event of an earthquake, you should get under a table. Now let's move on to our second C1 phrase that also contains the word event. In any event. It means in any case and whatever happens or might have happened. Like the previous phrase, it's also used more frequently in a formal context, but it can also be informal. Let's put that into an example sentence. I'm not sure if the report will be finished tomorrow, but in any event, you'll get it by Friday. I'm not sure if the report will be finished tomorrow, but in any event, you'll get it by Friday. And one more example. I don't know if I'll cross the finish line. In any event, I will do my best. I don't know if I'll cross the finish line. In any event, I will do my best. Now let's move on to our third phrase, which is for the most part. It means mostly or in most cases. And now two examples. The first one, we are on the same page for the most part, but I'd make some small changes in this area. We are on the same page for the most part, but I'd make some small changes in this area. And one more example, for the most part, the trip was amazing, except a few rainy days. For the most part, the trip was amazing, except a few rainy days. Number four, at a glance. It means immediately. The first example, I could see at a glance that he was lying. I could see at a glance that he was lying. And one more example, I could see at a glance that something bad had happened. I could see at a glance that something bad had happened. Number five, in accordance with, and we can have different things. It can be in accordance with a rule, law, wish, standard, or restriction. And it means following or obeying a rule, law, standard, wish, or restriction. And now two examples. The first one, in accordance with the new restrictions, Valencia is on lockdown on the weekends. In accordance with the new restrictions, Valencia is on lockdown on the weekends. And one more example, in accordance with the new rule, electric scooter riders have to wear a helmet. In accordance with the new rule, electric scooter riders have to wear a helmet. And guys, before we continue and learn five C2 phrases, 
just a super quick reminder please make sure you're subscribed to English Bits and your bell icon is on. Thank you. And now let's learn five C2 phrases. Number six, a taste for something. It means the fact of liking or enjoying something. And we can make it a verb and say to have a taste for something. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, she has a taste for books. So it's another way to say she likes books. She has a taste for books. And the second example about me, I have a taste for Japanese food. I have a taste for Japanese food. Number seven, frame of mind. It means the way someone thinks or feels about something at a particular time. And now a few examples. The first one, she has a reputation for being in a positive frame of mind. She has a reputation for being in a positive frame of mind. And the second example, also about me, going for a nice walk puts me in a positive frame of mind. Going for a nice walk puts me in a positive frame of mind. We can also say not in the right frame of mind for something or to do something, which means not in the mood for something. An example sentence, I'm not in the right frame of mind to discuss this issue right now. I'm not in the right frame of mind to discuss this issue right now. Number eight, along the lines of something. It means similar to something, but not exactly the same. And now a few examples. The first one, we told the architect we wanted a house along the lines of our former house, but a bit bigger. We told the architect we wanted a house along the lines of our former house, but a bit bigger. And the second example, his new book is along the lines of his previous bestseller. His new book is along the lines of his previous bestseller. Two more to go, number nine, by the same token. It means in a similar way and something can go either way. And now a few examples. The first one, I don't think the share prices will go up, but by the same token, I don't think they will go down much either. I don't think the share prices will go up, but by the same token, I don't think they will go down much either. And the second example, Tom loves living in England, but by the same token, he enjoys traveling to Spain in winter. Tom loves living in England, but by the same token, he enjoys traveling to Spain in winter. And last but not least, in the blink of an eye. It means extremely quickly. And now some examples. The first one, in the blink of an eye, my summer vacation was over. In the blink of an eye, my summer vacation was over. The second example, nowadays, everything is changing in the blink of an eye. Nowadays, everything is changing in the blink of an eye. And I've got a bonus example from the song The Last Time by Taylor Swift. And in this song, she sings, you break my heart in the blink of an eye. You break my heart in the blink of an eye, which means very quickly. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for having watched this lesson up to the very end. If you enjoyed it, you can check out the previous editions right here. It's the eighth edition of this series of lessons. And of course, if you found this English bit useful, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up as it's very encouraging and uplifting. Please subscribe to my channel and remember to catch me on Instagram for more daily English. Thanks for having watched this lesson and see you next week. Ciao for now!